I'm Carol Cohn, and welcome to Purpose 360, the podcast that unlocks the power of purpose to ignite business and social impact. I'm so excited today to have a returning guest to the show, Damon Jones, Chief Communications Officer of Procter & Gamble. Damon was on the show um, in May 2020. He had just been promoted to his new role of Chief Communications Officer, barely two months into the COVID pandemic. And boy, did he have to shift and pivot. And I said, what was the greatest thing you learned from that new challenge? And he said, being agile. Well, now Damon's been in the role almost three years and PNG has made exceptional progress in terms of bringing its purpose into the center of how the company operates, how it communicates, and how it activates with its employees, with its customers, its communities, not-for-profit partners, government, etc. P&G has a very direct purpose. It is to provide branded products and services of superior quality and value that improve the lives of the world's consumers now and for generations to come. Again, provide products and services of superior quality and value that improve the lives of the world's consumers now and for generations to come. And how do they do that? Well, for those of you who who either had a career at PNG or you actually applied for a job, they only take right now 1% of those over 100,000 applications they get annually. P&G has incredible rigor about understanding consumers. And it's not just the features and benefits of the products that they're buying. And by the way, I love my Cascade. It's great. I love my Tide. And um, there are many other products that that I use and I'm sure that you use of P&G. But they understand my life stage. They understand what's important to me and my family, um, my work life, my community, and not just me here in the U.S., but of people all around the globe. And then they innovate products that are very important for those people that they really need. But they also tell stories. And the films that P&G has created to bring core issues to life, issues such as diversity, equity, inclusion, racism, um, attacks on A- AAPI individuals, um, LBGTQ T plus individuals. With this deep consumer understanding, PNG not only evolves its products for certain types of needs and life stages, but they also get engaged with commentary and their short films are brilliant. And PNG has program after program after program touching on these issues because as Damon says, it's not that they want people to agree, but they want people to discuss. So let's get started. Welcome to the show, Damon Jones. Carol, it's great to be with you again. And it's great because we had you on the show. You were only one month into this new role on May 12th, 2020. And it was two months into the pandemic. So you were really in the fire. Be careful what you ask for because you, you just might get it. Well, and, and you've been with the company over 25 years now. So we're going to talk today about what you've learned, um, how, how you've had a real impact. But I want to embarrass you because um, you have a partner in crime at P&G, Mark Pritchard, and he's the chief brand officer. And uh, you were named number one in the PR week, um, exceptional leaders in the world. Um, I'd love to say that I was number 17 way back when in 2007. But number one, you were on the cover. I was so proud of you. And I kept that issue. Um, So I must be a fangirl. But this is what Mark Pritchard said about you. He said that Damon Jones is an exceptional leader and a trusted counselor who masterfully combines 
business acumen, experience, judgment, and true human connection to make a difference for P&G, its brands, and the people they serve. So I think he's blushing. I can't tell right now. Um, he's smiling. So that's, that's great. So let's just start out with this. Can you give for our listeners, because they may not have heard the first podcast, but I listened to it again. And it was great. And so this is part two, th- almost three years later for Damon Jones in his role. But just tell us about your role. And also, you have a very large team. So a little bit about that, too. I do. I have the uh, privilege and honor of leading a team of about 600 communicators around the world that are charged with really helping the world understand not only who P&G is, as one of the world's largest consumer goods companies. Um, but we have a portfolio of about 75 brands around the world, common household names. And we're one of the world's largest advertisers. And that c- creates an opportunity for us to be in conversation with consumers, not just about you know the P's and Q's of our products, but on many topics and issues that are important to them. Uh, and we see an opportunity to help advance how consumers uh, are making the world a better place uh, in small and meaningful ways, just like our products do. Um, but, it, you know, it's been a privilege and honor to work aside, you know, men and women who are, are incredibly committed uh, to doing the right thing uh, and to work to making the world a better place uh, and growing an amazing company as well. I'd like to just talk a little bit about what's it been like to be Damon Jones in this huge company with this huge role in the last three years. What did, what really impacted you? What did you learn? What was your impact on your role? I think when we look back through, you know, frankly, all that we've um, accomplished um, collectively as a society and surviving a pandemic is pretty impressive when you look back on it. You know, none of us have lived through a pandemic uh, of this global magnitude uh, and of this scope and scale. Um, and obviously, we didn't know what we were going into when we entered into it. Um, so I, I think for me and the lesson for many of our communicators is the power of agility, um, of able to, um, you know, read the room, understand what was needed. Um, you know, think about the brands that you mentioned. Uh, I mean, we've got a number of brands that are small, everyday brands that honestly people don't spend a lot of time thinking about until you don't have the benefits that they provide. Um, and, and those brands become really important. Think about, you know, the here in North America, the toilet paper shortage uh, when you couldn't find Charmin on the shelves. Charmin, right? I know. You think about how important those products are. Um, but even in, of, of the roles of, of cleaning health and hygiene products. So it really was an opportunity for us to demonstrate the importance and the relevance of not just having products, but having superior performing products that consumers know and trust, being able to communicate the benefits of those products in meaningful ways um, without uh, overly capitalizing on the moment. I think we've seen examples of brands that, you know, did a lot of fear mongering or fear marketing um, and consumers at the end of the day, they want something that they're familiar with. They want a brand that, that they trust and they want a brand that they know that's going to deliver. Uh, one of the opportunities though, that we did have during the pandemic was to just demonstrate how we as a company could be useful, right? If I think about you know, the one important moment on the journey for a new parent are those new parenting classes or Lamas classes, as we used to call them, right? You know, when, when you couldn't be together, you couldn't be there for those moments, right? So Pampers thought about how could it be useful and serve mothers and families. And so we did online parenting classes, you know, yeah. to and Braun helped guys learn how to cut their hair at home, right? I mean, you can go brand by brand. And so it, it's always about understanding the role that your brands and frankly, your company can play in the lives of the consumers that you serve uh, and ensure that we're doing, of course, the right things to step up and take care of, you know, the health, safety and well-being of P&G people. Uh, many of us did have the opportunity to work from home, uh, but we had people out there that were driving trucks to, to get products on store shelves. We had people who were in labs and in manufacturing plants every day, you know, uh, you know, putting uh, elements of their own health at risk to deliver uh, for people around the world. So it gave you a much deeper appreciation um, for all of the contributions that we can make. Uh, and my job as a communicator was easy uh, to really uh, highlight those amazing men and women around the world who who helped our company not just survive, but thrive during 
some incredibly challenging times, then you can look forward to think about, you know, uh, the Black Lives Matter movement following the murder of George Floyd. Uh, look at what happened when we saw, uh, you know, the instances of hate against the Asian American Pacific Islander community all created opportunities for companies and brands to step up, be useful, um, but to really put their values on front street um, in ways that attracted consumers, but in more importantly, in ways that brought communities together. I want you to talk a little bit about d- the pivot that you did during COVID because you had partnerships all around the globe and that the depth of your partnerships allowed you to pivot to making PPE and other things. Can you just talk about, because you're not just a, oh, we need a partnership tomorrow. You They're long-term partnerships. Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, some of our strongest uh, partnerships are with our retail customers, right? If you think about uh, the Walmarts, the Targets, the Kroger's, uh, you know, n- name them, um, you know, those are just in the U.S., but think of them all around the world. Um, and so when we recognized that, you know, supply chains around the world were under pressure, we looked internally to say, hey, what can we do? Uh, and, you know, we have alcohols in a number of our products. So we converted plants around the world to begin making hand sanitizer, right? Um, and not just making it available for sale, but frankly, giving it away to first responders, uh, hospitals in, in a full circle moment. I happened to have to be in the hospital with my dad earlier this summer and actually got a bottle of uh, Safeguard hand sanitizer, um, you know, that was donated to hospitals during the pandemic. Right. So it shows you how even some of those things are lasting to the day we had uh, for some of our paper making facilities. We began to make masks. Right, because we knew that providing PPE was there. Uh, we turned a number of our facilities here uh, in the U.S. and around the world to make face shields. So you began to look at what are the raw materials that you have and look at understanding what society needs. It was really, I think we were happy to play, you know, a small and an important role uh, in just chipping in to, to be useful and be helpful and contribute to the communities where we live and work. Power of agility and the power of commitment. I would love you to talk about the superhuman power that P&G has in terms of research. Because, yes, you know, and I know you're very data-driven and such, but you and your research, and obviously you're creating innovations in your products, but you also find that human element that is, you know, you're, you're in people's homes, you're watching how they're using your products, you learn about their lives, which I know part of that was the genesis for the talk. You have so many videos that support your products, but they are authentic. And if you can share with our listeners, I think it's your superhuman power of research, but also you listen so well. And so it's not difficult for your agencies, for your creatives to come up with true other moments to tie to your products? We talk about it as consumer understanding and not just research. Research is one element of tactical, give me a piece of data about a thing. But for us, it is really trying to uncover mind-opening insights about people in the way that they choose to live their lives. And, And I think it's actually one of the challenges when you look at the body of work that we define as purpose, where some people... Um, you know, potentially go off the rails a little bit. Um, and particularly when you get people who are accused of why are you, you know, into this issue or into that issue. And for us, our North Star is really about serving consumers, uh, being useful, creating insights that bring people together, that can spark dialogue, that lead to common understanding, uh, and that bring people together. Um, and I can give you a number of examples But that to me is not just, do you have a piece of data? How does this piece of data help you understand and relate to someone, not just by the label that they have for me as a black man, but what what are the roles that they play? And you look at something like the talk when you mentioned, yes, you can see, hey, this is, you know, about the conversations that black mothers have with their children. uh, And you can focus in on that dynamic, but name or show me a mother that doesn't want to equip her child to face um, the realities head on that they're going to face in the world, right? That's the through line um, that when you understand those through lines, they really transcend the differences that we see on the outside. I think in the past year, I know I have put the talk into all of my speeches um, and I talk talk about the fact that the PNG was very sensitive to the black community in 2015. It was before the talk even happened. Um, we're going to put, a, again, a link in our show notes, notes. But when the mother 
it's a mother talking to her daughter and also there's a son. And the, when she's in the car and she's with her daughter and her daughter's learning how to drive and she says, you know, mom, I can drive. And the mother says to her, I want to know you're going to come home. And every time I see that, I have chills. It is so powerful. So, and it's so real. Can you just talk a little bit in, about the response that you had to the talk? And then you did the series with the look and the choice. Yeah, well, the, the talk was powerful for a number of reasons. Number one, it was not commonplace that big corporations and big brands would get involved and to have the very real and raw conversations that people were having when they left work. And one of the things we had always wanted to be true to our employees was we recognized that you're not just a marketing manager or communications manager from nine to five. You're a whole person. And if we want you to be the best marketing manager, we've got to help ensure that you are the best person, right? And so how do we help you in your role as human, as mother, as parent, as friend, and not just as employee? So that was an insight that went into the the formation of that the, the, that program. The, the other thing there is, you know, mothers have amazing foresight, right? If you think back to not only the talk, but think about a lot of the work that we did through the Olympics program with Thank You Mom. There's a thread there about the foresight that mothers have in teaching the lessons that you may not really realize that are important today, but that will come back to you later in life. So those are some of those important threads of humanity that carry through. And you early, uh, earlier you mentioned, Carol, the importance of authenticity, right? You have to have those conversations and be willing to show uh, so that everyone can can see how these things really play out in life. And, and I think what we've learned is there are some ugly realities about parts of our society that still exist out there. And we can't begin to solve and really address them until we can begin to talk about them. But how you talk about them in a way that doesn't point a finger, that doesn't place blame, but that opens people up to the concept of learning more about being curious and about being curious about the most human elements of a parent and a child's relationship, that brings people in and and sparks a different type of conversation than simply saying, oh, there are some people in the world who are racist, right? We all know that, right? But that doesn't make it better. So really taking people on a journey, not to say that our point of view is right or wrong, but that invites pe- people to to really take a few steps on their own journey towards understanding perhaps something that they didn't understand before. And I know you've said in, a, in our, my previous conversation with you, it's not so much that they have to agree. You just want them to have the conversation. And you want you want to stimulate conversation. So, so kudos to you. Y- you've said in some other um, interviews, you said that you want to treat people in the fullness of their humanity. And I think that that is a great quote. Would you like to add to that or just let it sit? Well, I mean, <laughs> of course, I'll, 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 I'll add a little bit. And and I think now, you know, again, you know, the talk is, you know, what, six or seven years old now. Um, you know, it, we, as we think about, the, the the divisive nature of society that we find ourselves in, I think it's even more important today because it's not about agreeing, but it's about willing to being uh, being willing to come to the table and to understand someone's different point of view, uh, to value them for who they are, uh, and to really be in dialogue. Uh, if you think about so much of what we do today, it's shout loudest from the corner that you're in uh, without going deeper to, to, to seek to understand. And that's the mission that we continue to have with a lot of the creative work that we do. Uh, it's really fundamentally about bringing people together in service to our brands, in service to the communities, and in service to our consumers. So let's talk about some new initiatives. Let's talk about Widen the Screen, the Queen Collective. Widen the Screen is a partnership platform that we've created that has the intent of really fueling diverse voices to tell stories from their perspective. When you look at Hollywood, right, the majority of Hollywood films are told from the majority white perspective because the majority of the storytellers are white. Um, That's a fact. Um, And the only way you begin to get a different set of stories that are told with the authenticity that they deserve is to have a diversity of storytellers throughout that industry. So what we're trying to do with Widen the Screen is to tap into diverse storytellers, people of color, women, who can tell authentic stories about their communities on their terms. 
And we've seen such an amazing reaction from people who never thought that they could break into um, some very well-established industries. Uh, and the way you kind of make it into Hollywood, you start on a small film and eventually you get your big break. But that industry tends to hire people that they know, people that look like them, people that went to the same schools and, and are from the same communities. So it takes a deliberate step change, a discontinuity to be introduced into that ecosystem for that to change. Uh, and we, when we're approaching it holistically, not, not just looking at the storytellers, but looking even at where we tell those stories. Um, you know, minority owned media, black owned media is an incredibly small, less than 1% uh, of the total media ecosystem. And part of the reason it's so small is that you don't have the content, therefore you don't get the advertising, therefore you don't get investment. So you've got to make a systemic change in a number of these areas so that you give that nascent industry a chance to grow. And it's taking uh, not just PNG, but a number of other large companies to really begin to invest in changing the system and not just creating a program. But with Widen the Screen, it really is, you know, I think we've got now 14 films uh, with another dozen or so on the way uh, over the next 18 months that are really bringing new creative voices um, that we're going to be hearing a lot more from in the years to come. I just love the breadth of your communications. I mean, it, it, it's it's not media relations. You know, we all started out way back when doing media relations. I mean, it is true when purpose comes to the center of a brand and a company, it, it gives you a palette of just, you know, uh, infinite um, opportunities. How do you work with Mark? Because you guys work really closely together. And I think that for others um, who are not as integrated as the two of you, uh, you could give some um, insights. I think it goes back to fundamentally at PNG, we try to make sure that everything that we do not only impacts the communities we serve, but they frankly build the business, right? At the end of the day, equality is good for business. When you have more women participating equally in our society, when you have more people participating uh, equally, people of color participating in our society, that's good for economic growth. Uh, and we're a company that benefits when there's stronger economic growth. So at the core of our partnership is really alignment on what we call our guiding light, which is to be a force for growth and a force for good. We then take and look at what's the role of our brands and what's the role of our company. P&G happens to be one of the world's largest advertisers. So we can use advertising and storytelling as one of our superpowers to open up doors that might not be open to other companies and other industries. Uh, and, you know, Mark's a, you know, 40 year veteran of P&G knows the industry like the back of his hand. So that partnership, you know, between he and I allows us to really pick, you know, some very few areas where we can make a difference, go after them with long-term, multi-year, multi-partnered programs, um, and then do it in a way that sustains them over time, understanding what does a company need to be successful when they're in their space? What does a brand need to do to be successful when they're in that type of space? What does a third party and agency partner need to be to do to be successful in that space? So it really just gives us a real uh, multi-dimensional look. Uh, but at the core, you've got to have people that get it. You've got to have people that are willing to put their money where their mouth is and who are committed to it, even when it's not convenient. Um, and certainly, you know, like, like all businesses, you know, there's cost pressures and things. So making the few deliberate choices that we say, hey, you know, yes, times are tough, but this is something that we're not going to skimp or sacrifice on because it's good for our business and it's good for society long term. <laughs> that, that was an extraordinary um, comment. Was there like a significant event that happened that pivoted PNG to truly embrace purpose, social impact? Or was it something that slowly began as you knew the consumer and said the consumer is changing? I think it's been building for a long time. If you look at a lot of the areas, whether it is gender equality or racial equality or LGBT plus, we've been in these spaces for a long time. What's happened more recently is we've gotten to a point where we are, we're more willing to talk about it and we're finding ways to be better at telling those stories. But you don't wake up one day and then all of a sudden become an advocate and create a, a nice film and campaign. Uh, people will, will see right through that. Many of these conversations you have to earn your right into. Part of the reason we could do the talk, the look, the choice, I'll give you the litany of all of the videos is because we've been understanding 
the fundamental challenges, not just in our industry, but in our own company, right? Procter's far from, you know, a perfect company, um, but are we committed to greater racial equity within our walls? Yes. Which means that we've had the tough conversations. We've been transparent with the data. Um, we've uh, done, made the cultural shifts that we need to do to make this conversation a bit easier internally. And so when you can speak from experience uh, and when you can go into some of these types of activities, and not be fearful of what someone is going to say because you haven't gotten it right. We've been down that path, right? So what you're seeing on the outside is a manifestation of work that's been happening on the inside for quite some time. So I want to talk a little bit about the brands that we don't, that aren't as big as the talk, but they have interesting ads and even mini films. And so, for example, um, in no particular order, um, you did Belonging Starts Here with a name which was a beautiful, beautiful piece. And it's not selling something. It's again, it's, it's making a statement, you know, then you, you've got, uh, the, the, and I don't know if this was just Africa, the Pampers giving the eight weeks of paternity leave um, was Pampers and dads. Was that around the globe or was just, uh, was that just a geography? It's, it's happened in a, in a few geographies. Uh, one of the things that we try to do is to be timely and locally relevant everywhere. Right. So uh, if I you know, looked at some of the programs we've done on transgender rights in India, right, or if you've done some of the work that we've done on uniqueness and individuality in Japan or uh, the marriage market takeover that we did in China, we're always trying to find a locally relevant insight um, because we want people to step back and go, hmm. Yes, that's that. That's it. I, I see myself in that. And you need to have the right flexibility within certain frameworks around the world to be able to do that. But if you take an, a, a campaign like The Name, which is uh, an effort that we did, uh, I'd say, you know, the past 18 months following instances of hate that were on the rise being waged against uh, the Asian American community here in the U.S., we started by saying, let's not just jump on the bandwagon and do the Instagram post that says stop Asian hate. Yes, we do that. But in each of these campaigns, we want to be ready for what we call the double click, mm, right? Okay. If you really do believe Black Lives Matter, I'll use that one as a as an instance, then tell me how that commitment has manifested itself. And are you just doing this to be in fashion with the trend? Or is this commitment real and, and meaningful and measured and substantive and hasn't been going on for a while? And the more we got into the uh, understanding some of the nuances with uh, the Asian American community, one of the things we began to ask the why, you know, you double click level by level by level. And it really was about how are we seen and are we seen again in the fullness of our humanity? And you can't be seen in the fullness of your humanity when someone can't even pronounce your name right. Mm-hmm. That was a beautiful piece. Yeah. A number of different iterations because we had to strike the right balance of, again, finding the mind opening insight and not blaming someone for what they didn't know. And not to say that everyone needs to know how to pronounce everyone's name. That's that's an unreasonable expectation. But when you can open up the humanity to say, hey, help me understand who you are and your name as a powerful tool, if I care enough to know your name, to pronounce your name correctly, that's a sign of respect. Right. And that sign of respect is the foundation for an amazing relationship, whether that's a personal relationship, whether that's a work relationship or whether that's just someone you're on the street with. Right. So it's, it's a way of role modeling how we can be better at you know, being fellow members of humanity, but without pointing the blame at anyone um, and really focusing not just on the past, but focusing on the future. And, and you're not selling a product. You're selling a relationship with this amazing company so that when I consider the products, and I don't know if that one had the, had the logos at the end of it. Some of yours do. Yeah. In that case, we, we did, we did do some work with Fix and Pampers specifically to go in even deeper, but it, it is one of the things that we know is you need to get the right balance of commercializing your work. We believe at the end of the day, companies uh, or consumers do appreciate um, great companies behind the brands that they that they buy every day. Um, and so you've got to find the time and place because if you go too hard too soon, people will, um, you know, add a degree of skepticism doing the, you sell me some laundry detergent. Um, but we think the body of evidence that we now have over many years, over many different causes will help bring to life the commitment that we actually have to the consumers that we serve. 
So let's talk about innovation. And I will tell you that many of my clients are so jealous of Tide cold water. They go, why didn't I think of that? That is so, you know, how you help with sustainability. The small acts can make a big difference like the Cascade. So you did this beautiful spot called It's Our Home. Can you talk about that a bit? It was an Earth Week celebration spot, but it was this little girl in a you know space suit, and she's trying to run around the house and, hey, Dad, you know, turn off the water when you're shaving. I do that to my husband all the time. Turn off the water when you're shaving. Don't waste it. But can you talk about that spot? Because it's beautiful and also tied in cold water. Yes, sustainability is one of the core elements of our overall citizenship program. Um, and we want not only to have uh, superior performing products, which is what we know that drives purchase, but we want superiority that is actually sustainable, right? And we know it's not about a trade-off. Do I have a great performing product or do I have a sustainable product? We want both. Um, but, but one of the things that with the size and scale of the environmental challenges, it's all hands on deck. Uh, and every opportunity can make a big difference. So again, like many of our, of our projects, we started with understanding the consumer and we found out that 77% of consumers really believe that small daily actions that they can take at home can make a positive impact. About the same number, um, believe that if we all do those things, we can have an even bigger impact on the planet, right? And so the, the the fundamental insight is, yes, do I want a product that's made responsibly? You know, okay, of course we do that, right? But what's the, the point of difference? And so It's Our Home tries to illustrate across the entire portfolio of products that we have, what are some of those small acts that we as a company are enabling consumers to make, enabling them to make that by the innovation that we have, such as in Tide Cold Water, a product that cleans as effectively in cold as it does hot, uh, or in the case of Cascade, where you don't have to pre-rinse your dishes, but helping people understand what they too can do, right? And that it doesn't have to be a heavy lift. The other magical thing about that is we know the younger consumers are, the more willing they are to uh, change their habits to do the right thing. So it was a very deliberate choice to show a young girl in this instance, and not, you know, uh, an older individual, um, um, because that was the insight. And, and children can be incredibly influential on their parents. Again, all of these things, we try to bring forth um, small human insights, whether that's environmental sustainability, whether that's in quality and inclusion, whether that's community impact, again, grounded in what consumers are telling us they want for the world that they live in. And in this case, the world that they want their children to live in. Pester factor works really well. <laughs> that's that's great. I want to talk about another spot, which I just thought was so compelling. And I see it's going to be a series. And it's the Bennett sisters. And they're 13 years old. And they are uh, the founders of Women in Training that deals with period products and period poverty. So I'm just curious about, and it's from always, um, I'm just curious about how that came about. It's absolutely endearing. And it's real. It's real people. Again, the authenticity of a, of a campaign, um, when you don't have authentic voices, people will sniff through it in a heartbeat. Um, so that's kind of a mandatory for us. But period poverty is a very real issue. Um, for years, we've talked uh, about um, the work that we're doing in terms of providing feminine protection products um, to emerging nations, right? Because we know that when girls can stay in school, um, particularly throughout um, their years of, of, of puberty, um, you know, they will enable a stronger futures, not just for themselves, but for their, for their families and for their communities. Um, but often overlooked is period poverty, even in the U S in develop, you know, uh, markets. Uh, and so with, um, you know, the Bennett sisters and, and others, we're bringing awareness to that issue. Um, we're helping, uh, do things such as, you know, talk about, you know, what schools and other businesses can do to simply make products available. Um, let's talk about affordability. Um, when you have people who are in low income situations and they can't access that, um, you know, and they, they don't have availability to that, they too don't go to school. There's lots of self-esteem issues. I mean, it has so many different knock on effects. But again, this is, uh, you know, another case where if you can begin to talk about the problem, be transparent, um, you, we will attract, we believe, and in this case, we have attracted lots of um, partners in the U.S. and around the world who are willing to work on these types of issues with us. 
But the Bennett sisters, I had a chance to meet them at the Global Citizen Festival that we did in New York uh, last summer. Um, two just amazing, uh, strong, beautiful uh, young women um, who have found their voice at such an early age. And it's a beautiful thing to see. And how do you find these people? How do you find these stories? You know, I, I will tell you, there, there's there's richness in social media uh, if you're tied into the depths and doldrums. But there are plenty of people who you just look out and and, and find where communities of activism is happening. Um, uh, and it's happening in a constructive way. Uh, there, there, there are so many more people like there out there. We wish we could partner with them all. Um, but but again, I, I think it also speaks. Um, to the always team that we have because they've been in the space working with a number of NGOs for years. Um, and so when you're in that space and people recognize that you're doing good, even when um, the spotlight isn't on, I think we will wind up attracting uh, partners who want to work with our brands uh, because they know we're really committed to the cause. Because you're authentic. And it, it's like no space between really having an impact and your brands and having loyalty to those brands. It's, it's extraordinary. Let's go back to right now, your citizenship report. What is your role in that? And what do you think of it? And I have to give you kudos because I love it's not like dear investor. It's dear stakeholder. So it's got a wonderful, you know, opening from your CEO. But what's your role in that? At the core of everything we do on citizenship is this notion of balance, balancing the needs of all of the stakeholders. So, yes, when you read our, our citizenship report and it says starts with dear stakeholder, that's a recognition that everyone is important. Doesn't mean that we go to the lowest common denominator and that everyone agrees, but that we acknowledge that we'll be a better company when we balance the needs and views of all of those stakeholders. I think what we try to demonstrate in this year's report, as in past years, is sequential progress against the things that we've said we, we, we would do. I mean, we've been publishing a version of this report for more than 30 years. Um, and it's not just a look back at what we've done. It's a commitment to what we're going to do uh, in the year ahead. So my my specific role is to make sure that our North Star is clear, that our team has the resources that they, that they need to execute it well, that we're telling stories from all across the globe, and that we remain humble uh, to, yes, take credit for the contributions uh, that we've made, um, but to keep our eye focused on the contributions that we still need to make in the future. So it's a progress report, um, not, not, not just an opportunity to look back and feel good about ourselves. I love your comment. To you, Part of your job is to make sure your North Star is clear. Listeners, this is why I love this guy so much. I mean, I love Damon Jones. I want to just hang out with him all the time. Damon, I want to ask you a personal question. What is your why? You know, I've always wanted to work at an organization that I was proud of, right? And it's, it's one of these things where you know, I don't define myself by working from Procter and Gamble, uh, but it's something that is an important part of who I am. It's it's definitely part of the part of the juice, if you will. Um, and I want to work at a place where um, I scratch a number of itches. I've got got friends that work at places, um, and then they leave work at five or six o'clock, and then they really get excited about what they do at night, right? And for me, if I wasn't working at a place that I felt that I could bring, you know, all of me to, then I don't know that that's a full use of my, um, you know, my energy. So I, I want to work in a place that I can give my all, that it gives that all back to me. Um, and that is very clear on the role and impact it can have um, on, you know, society beyond its own walls. Ah. Oh. That's wonderful. Um, I want to ask you about recruiting. Um, over the years, as you have gotten more and more of the balance, the power of and, as I call it, between a force for growth and a force for good, how has that impacted recruiting for you? I will tell you, um, you know, some of the, the, the toughest conversations we have during recruiting times are people really wanting to make sure that companies are walking the talk. Right. Uh, and, and they're not OK just to read the report. They're asking deep and penetrating questions about what is a company's uh, responsibility? What is a company's actions? And if they were to join that company, what is their opportunity to touch these things? Right. So we don't think about citizenship as something that's managed in one department or by one group of people. You know, all 100,000 P&G employees uh, can see a link between what they do uh, and, you know, what we stand for in the communities where we live and work. I think that's something that makes us special. But yes, absolutely. Recruits are holding us to a high standard because they want to make a, a difference in the world. They just don't want to get a check. And you must 
get many, many, many more resumes and people that want to work for you than you can even hire. As a company, we hire about 1% of people that apply um, to PNG every year. Uh, so it's an incredibly rigorous and detailed process. Um, but we like to think that the people that make it through that process are a really good fit and can come contribute beginning day one. Uh, and that's really our goal. 1%. Gosh, that's that's a high bar, it's a very high bar. So, so I hate to hate to, to get this to close, but I do have to let you get on to the rest of your job because it's a very big job. What inspires you in terms of what do you read, um, newsletters, um, people? Because um, I think people want to say, "Gee, I want to be like Damon, but I need to get that knowledge." Where do I get it? Where do you get yours? I I look. I mean, I, I spend a ton of time on social media. Uh, even Twitter still a little bit, just because I, I like to understand where the conversation is happening. Um, I go to uh, the, the rankings charts on uh, on Apple Podcasts um, to see what are the podcasts. And again, I you know I've got a few that I I, I really like the Earn Your Leisure or the Pivot podcast. Um, oh, I love I Pivot, sit. yeah. But, but but for those, it's always trying to find something new and different. So every couple of weeks, I'm into some different conversations because for me, my job is to really bring it in integrated view of what's happening in the world. And if I'm only stuck reading the journal or USA Today or Fast Company, which are all great publications, but they speak to Damon, I've got to make sure um, that we're looking at all the news channels. So that's CNN and Fox News. I'm looking at publications, domestic and international. So just being a student and a hunger of information and perspective, I think has helped me stay in touch uh, with the trends and, and help me navigate them, not just personally, but for P&G as a whole. So I always love to turn to you um, at the end and say, you know, what would you like to add um, that we haven't discussed? We've covered so much, Carol, but if there's one point that I would reinforce to professionals in this space um, is that actions matter so much more than headlines. Oftentimes, the integration between uh, purpose work and communications work leads people to believe it's about the story that you can tell. And while the story you can tell does matter, unless you've done the work, unless you've done the work for some time and you're really clear on your impact, um, it's, you, you're going to go get off track, right? So we start with, don't talk to me about what we're going to say. Talk to me about what we're going to do. Let's focus on the actions and not the headlines. Um, and, and I think that would be, you know, the, the simple advice that I would share. Um, when you get called and, and someone's got a great idea um, for what they can do in a particular situation, don't focus first. Don't focus first on what you're going to say. Focus first on what you're going to do. Um, and that'll put you on the right path to, to make purpose uh, a really um, a real strategic advantage for your brand or your company. I love it. And, and I totally agree with you. Well, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. I can't wait to see you on a cover of another magazine, and then I'll be able to add to my collection um, as I'm a fangirl. But Damon Jones, I, I am really, I am, I'm honored to be a colleague um, through the Arthur Page Society. I'm honored to just to have you on the show. You are doing such a spectacular job, and you know I've been doing this for decades, and the the commitment, the authenticity that you bring to this um, is, and you know, you're so generous with your time really to help people grow in their careers and such. And so I want to thank you for this conversation and I wish you the best for 2023 and hopefully we'll have you back again in about a year. The same to you, Carol, but you forgot one incredibly important part of that. You forgot friend. Oh, friend. okay. Okay. Well, bringing so much to this and elevating the voices that is helping us all get, get better. So thank you for, for what you do for our, our, our collective community as well. You're so kind. I am honored that I can be, I can say, Hey, Damon Jones is one of my friends. And of course, now every time I use any one of your products, I'm going to go, there's my friend. He's behind it all. And he's making the world a better place with lots of clarity and great integration to business. So a wonderful role model listeners. He is just amazing. Amazing. And you know what? I can't wait to see the next thing you're going to do and the next program and the initiative. We know it's going to have, again, great depth. It's going to come under come from great consumer understanding, but you're also a great humanist. So thank you. Thank you, Carol. Take care. This podcast was brought to you by some amazing people, and I'd love to thank them. Ann Hundertmark and Kristen Kenny 
at Carol Cohn on Purpose, Pete Wright and Andy Nelson, our crack production team at True Story FM, and you, our listener. You know, we love hearing from you, so please give us feedback. Let us know names of people you'd like to hear on a future episode. How about some new questions to ask? And also, please rate and rank us, because we really want to be as high as possible as one of the top business podcasts available so that we can continue exploring together the importance and the activation of authentic purpose. We all know every company, every brand, every not-for-profit must define their purpose, refine it, and activate it, and evolve it over time so it has the greatest impact on business growth and society. And by listening to these episodes and sharing them with your colleagues and talking about them, I want to inspire you to have an amazing answer to this question. What is the power of your purpose? Thanks so much for listening.